Welcome my friends, Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Today is mostly an update, but I want to tell you about crazy wind in Southern Arizona. Let's roll the intro and get into it. I've been doing boondocking for something like five years now, and usually it's windy in the afternoons. At least that's my experience rarely overnight just a few times and usually those are rainstorms but last night no rainstorm and massive winds overnight so much so that some really freaky things happened let me explain and let me tell you okay i'm going to go outside here my sliding glass door here that's the first thing i want to tell you about i woke up last night probably about three in the morning to uh, banging and the whole entire trailer rocking back and forth. And I uh, went to check it out and found out my sliding glass door, which I'm sure was shut when I went to sleep, was open by about a foot, a little bit over a foot, and just completely open. And my curtains, which were shut, were blowing out through the hole. So apparently, I think that the trailer was rocking so much that it caused the sliding glass door to actually open up. That has never happened before. I've been in this trailer for almost a year and a half. That has never happened. Probably you can hear the wind out here, but looking outside this morning off my deck, my deck chair is gone off the deck. Probably you can hear the wind noise here. Um, I have my ramp set up as a deck back here and my deck chair this morning in daylight is gone. I think that might have been part of the noise that I heard last night. And I have a tiny little barbecue grill that I purchased just a few weeks ago. That was set up on an outdoor Coleman portable table, collapsible table, and it was thrown off of that table. Let me show you. Over here is the table that I purchased. It's just right for the Coleman and there is my grill down on the ground. So I pushed it off here and down onto the ground. Now you could probably hear all the wind noise. Uh, my wind muff, which is called like a dead cat kind of thing, is uh, blowing to the side. Now going downwind off in the distance here, I can see my chair. It didn't go very far, but still it blew it probably 30 feet from my trailer and I'm sort of in a little bit of a dead zone here so you can probably hear me a little bit better. And my trailer is set up on I guess stabilizer jacks. They're just like individual little ones and that's supposed to stabilize it from the wind here but it certainly did not do the job last night. Here's the little stabilizer jacks that I have and I have these on all four corners of the trailer and they are secured and tight uh, so that should have been preventing it. And my wheels are set up with uh, black rubber blocks here. And then I have these fancy ones that are used for leveling. I have it up just a little bit here. And then these uh, metal locks, which are really nice to go between the wheels. So I feel like I have a pretty secure, not as much as say the hydraulic variety that are the big posts that go down, but uh, all four corners are pretty secure. Now my trailer's a little bit taller than normal. I should mention that I'm exactly perpendicular to the wind. So I did look at the forecast for the next week or so, and the wind's going to continue coming from the north and going to the south, which is perpendicular to me. So today, I'm gonna move my trailer and turn it 90 degrees so it's pointing nose into the wind and hopefully that will eliminate me not getting sleep at night. Wind was also strong enough that it blew out my pilot or the uh, air intake for my diesel heater. So underneath the trailer there's an exhaust and then there's an air intake. So one of those two got enough air blowing into it that it went back up into the heater and blew out the flame. So the air I had when I looked at it, when I looked at it in the middle of the night said that the flame had been blown out, that it was not going. I was able to reset it and get it going again, no problem. So it's not the heater itself, it's just actually the wind. Crazy. One of the other things I wanted to do in this video is sort of give you an update on sort of what's happening in my life 
and also with my build with my various projects that I've been working on so let's tackle that first let's go through some of the projects I've been working on you can see what's happening with my build first off I've created the second of my cabinets and this is just the shell I don't have the drawers there's going to be drawers to the left and right of the sink you see here and then I still need to do the plumbing and stuff right now I have it sort of set into place figuring out how all the stuff's going to work I, I do like it I think I do want to make a few adjustments I'm going to uh, add some extra plywood here to give some thickness to the front of it it just looks a little thin it's functional it's fine but I think it would look a little bit better being thicker here on the front. So I'm going to do that, adding face frames to this and then the drawers on the left side and the right side over there. I have a new stand for my Berkey water filter. This is my primarily for drinking water and it's going to be the left of the faucet. Still have to do the plumbing on the faucet, but this uh, nozzle will be able to extend and remove and I'll be able to go up here to the top and fill my Berkey directly with this faucet. So that's gonna be nice. And on the opposite side, I'm gonna have my coffee maker set up so uh, I can get water source here to the left and right. I still need to do the plumbing on the sink and then uh, get the pump hooked up for the water tank over here. That's like a 50 gallon over here. Now, what I like about this particular sink, and I'll put a link below, I got this off of Amazon. It's actually an undermount sink, but I'm going to put it over the top. I think it looks still okay with this on the top of the countertop. It has a, a removable butcher block on one side, and it has um, sort of a vegetable fruit drainer. So you can chop here, put stuff in here, and rinse it out using the faucet up here. So that's sort of nice. And underneath in the bottom, there is... Uh, a drain grid so it's a pretty nice sink I like it a lot I'll put the link down below if you're interested in uh, picking up one of those for yourself the other big project that I've been working on is electrical for the holidays I purchased a gift for myself and that's an upgrade to my lithium batteries so there are going to be three different components that I'm upgrading one is the box I'm changing the configuration completely for my lithium batteries so I'm moving them from the current box, which turned out to be not nearly as nice as I would have liked. So I've created a new box that's going to fit into my build much, much better. At least I'm crossing my fingers and I hope so. Item number two, I'm adding eight more cells to my battery. I have a 24 volt battery, currently it has 16 cells. So I'm gonna be bumping that up by another eight. So it will have a total of uh, 24 cells in total so the equivalent in 12 volt battery life or the 12 volt world would be six like Battleborn batteries so it's going to be 600 amp hours worth of battery power here why so much well eventually I'm going to be adding a split AC and I want to be able to run that in the late afternoons into early evening so I want that extra battery capacity as well as when it's cloudy and overcast on uh, multiple days of that or rain so anyway adding those eight cells and item number three is I've been having some problems if you see the past video I'll put a link above to that where I'm having some problems with the battery the battery management system the BMS shorting out cutting out an over voltage problem with my old um, BMS. Unfortunately, I'm not able to easily program the existing BMS, the DALI BMS, so I'm upgrading that to a new style BMS that will be in a later video when I actually am going to be hooking this up and explaining it. So here are my new cells that I just received. I have eight of these and I'm in the middle of doing what's called a top balance. A top balance is bringing all of these in parallel up to 3.65 volts. And you use this little gizmo down here, which is a 12 volt power source. You can see there at the very top, it says 364. So I'm gonna bring it up to 364, 365, right around there. And I have it slightly under, you can see it flips back and forth between 364, 365. And that will bring all of these cells up to equal voltage and once that's done, then I can actually 
change the configuration to a standard 24 volt pack and then wire it into the battery management system. So this is my new battery carrier box and as you can see I've changed the batteries from being laying on their side to being upright and then along the back side here I'm going to have three um, BMS's, one for each of these eight packs. So there'll be eight pack here, one BMS, another eight pack over here, one BMS, and then on the far right, the other eight pack with another BMS. And you ask, why don't I have one BMS? Well, that's the way they make them is you can only do eight cells, which is 24 volts, it requires a dedicated BMS. So at least I've never seen one in any other configuration. So I'll be talking more about the new BMS in the future. This little um, box here is on wheels. See down here is my voltmeter, so I can check these about every 30 or 40 minutes and make sure the voltage is coming along. I think I'm at 3.35 3 right now, so I've got a ways to go. Just a quick shout out to Electric Car Company where I purchased these lithium cells. I'll put a link down below to them. Um, I had some difficulty with the first set of cells I received uh, just a few weeks ago and so they were really fabulous in working with me on those and actually sent me this uh, set that you see now as a replacement for that with really no hassle so that was really an amazing wonderful thing for them to provide such great customer service so if you are looking for lithium cells recommend uh, contacting these guys they'll definitely take care of you just a couple of weeks ago i was in las vegas visiting my brother i didn't film any of that it was sort of family time and really had a great time there for i don't know four or five days something like that during the time i was there his buddy medardo who is a really amazing mechanic helped me out with uh, a couple of things and let me show you in the truck uh, some of the upgrades almost two years ago my truck was stolen one of the things that they took out of it when it was returned i got it back without a stereo so medardo was kind enough to help install this new stereo it's a flat panel i guess they call it a double den and this particular one here is a kenwood and it has a backup camera built into it so it's somewhat comparable to what was stolen out of this before i had an alpine a little bit older this kenwood is a little bit newer newer so roughly the same functionality another upgrade is the steering wheel as you recall when it was stolen they took a sawzall and cut through the steering wheel to remove the um like security what do they call that thing not a boot but uh Anyway, it's a lock that went on the steering wheel. They had to cut the steering wheel to remove that to drive away. So I have taken epoxy and glued it back together and then put on this steering wheel cover sort of to just cover that little uh, cut that has now been glued together. So uh, steering wheel is looking good. I do have a few other upgrades that I need to do to get it back to what it was. Um, there's a couple of little plastic panels that are missing on the inside. The rear seat is still not replaced, but I may end up putting a, a like a wood uh, storage area uh, inside there. So debating on what to do there. And, and they stole my tailgate. Um, I think in, instead of replacing the tailgate, which is a few hundred dollars, I'm going to put that money towards getting a utility topper. So if you know of any utility toppers in southern Arizona for a long bed Ford pickup truck, I'm looking for one of those. And the type I'm looking for actually replaces the tailgate with a set of doors that go from the bottom of the bed up to the top of the topper. I'm also looking for one with a ladder rack on top so that I can get like a kayak type thing to put in there. And this will become my new base for all of my tools and uh, building supplies which will move those out of the trailer giving me a lot more room. So I am currently shopping for that, hoping to get that in the near future. So that's about all the updates for my projects and stuff going on here. I've done lots of other tiny, tiny little things, probably not even worth mentioning. Uh, other update I wanted to tell you is uh, health issues. My shoulder, which I tore my rotator cuff, is just uh, doing fantastic right now. I'm probably about 95% the strength and 100% the mobility of being able to move it, uh, range of motion. So 
that's doing absolutely fantastic. That's all that's going on in my world. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future video.